Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Rocco Farend. Uh, you might know me as something else, but here I'm called Rocco. <laughs> uh, and I am the creator of the tabletop RPG Urchin's Fall, uh, which is currently in development. And I wanted to just kind of create a developer diary to talk about what I've done in roughly the past two weeks or so. Uh, and I wanted to talk about my process so far, especially because some of this has been done uh, live-streamed on my channel and just as much has been done uh, offline where I can, you know, focus or do <laughs> the boring parts. Um, so I'm going to take you through what I have. First and foremost, the first thing I do whenever I create any design document, <laughs> and, and I don't know if this is just a me thing, but I always, always, always like to create a table of contents. Uh, I find it really helps me organize my thoughts and let me know exactly which order I want to introduce information to the player uh, or reader or fellow dev, whoever the subject of my documentation is, right? Uh, and, and you might see there's a couple of duplicates here, you know, creating a characters down there, creating characters up here. It's it's going to be a thing that evolves over time. Uh, I, need to, <laughs> I need to clean up this version down here. But uh, I make no secret of the fact that you are looking at an in-progress document that is only really being shown to the public for the sake of talking about this process. Um, so, of course, I have... You know, going over all, all the, I like to joke, the boring stuff. You know, this document will be in part one, part two, part two, three, part four, part five. Here's what you can find and where. Um, and I can kind of talk about that. I wanted part one to just be core rules of play, how to play. Part two, focusing on, I want to get in and I want to play right now. I want to create a character. I want to see what the races are. I want to see what the classes, the backgrounds, the innate elements, which is something we'll talk about shortly. I want to talk about all of the fun systems and mechanics uh, that I have conjured up. Actually, I should, uh, let me <laughs> let me grab that info right now, because for some reason, uh, I didn't think to pull it up before clicking the record button. Here it is. It might be cut off at the top. Um, I made a, a very, very, very light first draft mock-up character sheet to kind of like organize my thoughts because because pretty much what happened was I was starting and just writing a lore document for like a setting I have I wanted to get more writing stuff out there and I kind of said screw it I am a game dev let's <laughs> let's make this a game so I kind of started with um the magic system that was my top priority and I just wanted to visualize that and figure that out so so I'll zoom in here and you can kind of see uh, what I wanted to do was have each of the eight elements uh, be clearly kind of their own resource, just to match how this setting works. Um, the, the inner number here represents the maximum spell slots a character can carry, and these pips on the outside uh, represent the amount carried, and that would be shaded with a uh, like pencil and eraser on like a printout character sheet. Um, all of this, naturally, is going to get... <laughs> Uh, a big facelift before I ever reveal this to the public. Um, but this was a, a great way to just toy around with thoughts and how I would represent them. Like, what if there was a weight stat? Will there be a weight stat? Certainly not so complicated that I would ask players to do 40 plus 3 and then <laughs> have to worry about that mid-combat. Right? But but that's why playtesting is a thing. Uh, one thing I did decide I definitely want is I want... Uh, directional armor class as you can kind of see where my cursor's swirling around here this almost forward pointing arrow is in reference to uh, guarding against attacks from the front against attacks from above against attacks from below and against attacks from behind i've always been a big fan of uh, positional rewarding in strategy-esque games um it, it made me feel like you know each micro decision matters a little bit more and in a tabletop game that's kind of focused on team play, that, that's very much what I want to focus on, uh, this kind of seemed like a natural thing that I at least want to experiment with. So, pretty much I, I had this document, and I've been writing out the, the core rules, you know, for the first draft of playtesting. And in the meantime, 
I've had the second document. You know, we've got the, the main document where everything's so pretty and so formatted. We got document number two. <laughs> Uh, this is more or less for unformatted thoughts, uh, strictly mechanical. This is not something I would really show to <laughs> anyone in a vacuum. Um, but I wanted to list out uh, the bonuses each race has, uh, figure out what classes I wanted to start with, what skills they have, what sets them apart from other characters. And, and the main design philosophy here right, at least for the first go-around, um, is that I want classes to kind of be this lightweight thing. You pick it at level one, you get unique skills to it. You know, in the case of Vanguard, it's a very straightforward one you can cover. You can take an adjacent hit for an ally. Um, whereas in the case of Conduit, there's something a little more complicated uh, involving basically getting additional spell slots when you uh, channel, which is this active skill to restore these uh, that I talk more about in the document. Um, but it, it was really just getting the ideas out there, you know, talking about who gets what. It's still subject to change. And most importantly, I wanted to talk about the different play styles of uh, each element. So I'll, I'll go back to this image and kind of talk about this again. Uh, this setting uh, features channelers as spellcasters. They're, they're very in tune with the universe, and magic is kind of a... A respiration of the soul. It is a thing anyone can do, whether they're, you know, a big beefy knight <laughs> or uh, like a, a mage casting spells from a distance. Magic is something that every single character will use in their kit. So I wanted to have this represent different play styles. You know, each of these eight spell slots uh, has access to a different set of spells. As you can see in the spell list, <laughs> Uh, I've got quite a few. I think we have about 50 right now. Uh, pretty much all filled with, you know, value, value, value. Lots of temporary values, just while I figure out, like, base damage and what kind of calculations I want players to work with. And I'll fill it in from there. But the, d the design philosophy is there. Of Each one, I, I kind of took inspiration from um, card games, like Magic the Gathering, or uh, Digimon, <laughs> the Digimon card game I'm actually a good bit more familiar with, and kind of seeing how each different color has a different niche. So, you know, blue is like denying your enemy the victory, or yellow is uh, like searching their memory stack and doing memory manipulation in the case of Digimon, um, or, you know, purple is like going through your graveyard. So I wanted each mono-elemental kit to, to kind of focus on that. Um, so let me actually sort by cost. I, I had this sorted by cost of strike, which is what portion of a turn they take. But each of the air ones is kind of focused on position manipulation and single target damage. Most of the cheap skills, uh, you know, anything that costs air one or anything, you know, that is a little expensive but costs half a turn, is generally going to fall into that play style. You know, we have movement skill, movement skill, movement skill, uh not quite a movement skill, that one's being workshopped, you know, damage, damage, support, movement skill, damage, damage, support, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very clear identity, and that kind of repeats going down the line, so dark is very much focused on status effects, AoE, and position manipulation, um, and I've got about five of the elements figured out so far. They all have their mono-elemental kits. I'm going to do multi-elemental spells down the line. This is a thing that uh, characters can spec into as they level up, uh, but it's not a thing I want to worry about right now. Um, but that, that more or less should go over kind of my process. <laughs> um, it's, it's a very iterative thing, and I very much bounce around uh, to whatever is most interesting right now. And my process often leaves a lot of, you know, unfilled spaces. <laughs> um, but I wanted to just kind of give an update and uh, hopefully make this a regular thing. Uh, I hope that you are looking forward to the release of this as much as me. Uh, I cannot wait to get this into players' hands because something that I've put great effort into has been, you know, making sure that there's a way to make 
<laughs> uh, just absolutely absurd builds, you know, like, uh, play as a Stoban and put poison on your horns and, you know, rush down enemies and gore them on your horns to poison them as, like, a, like, a raid vanguard build or, like, rot vanguard build or whatever. <laughs> um, that is probably something that we'll be able to see, hopefully, by the end of the month, most likely by the end of the year, and definitely sometime in winter 2023. Uh, things have been going pretty smoothly. I've just been continuously inspired to keep writing. Uh, this is a setting that's kind of very near and dear to my heart, and something that I've had in the back of my mind for a very long time. So I'm, I'm truly excited to be working on this, and I thank you for taking the time to watch this, and wish you well. Peace out, y'all.